to my channel. For those that don't know me, my name is Tanasia. I am currently in the respiratory care program and I am third semester. <laughs> Um, I just pretty much wanted to come on here and update you guys on everything that's been going on. If you guys haven't already watched my last vlog that I posted on my channel, I just basically took you guys with me on um, a weekend that I had to work right before I started um, the new semester. Um, I'm currently a respiratory therapy student, but I am currently able to work actively at the hospital that I've been at for about almost four years come August and I'm actually an intern where I have actual patients I actually get to place orders I get to perform certain um, therapies on patients as far as CPT any type of therapy that that pa Pacific patient um, needs in order to get better depending on what type of disease process they have or whether it's an acute situation or any type of exacerbations that they suffered outside of the disease that they have um, I just wanted you guys to come along with me to see what I do in a day. I couldn't really show y'all more if y'all felt like the last vlog wasn't enough because as you know with the hospital, especially during daytime, it's not really much I can show you and everyone is pretty much there. So it's hard to get even just the littlest shot. Just to update you guys on just me, um, as you guys know, I have like so much going on but it's almost like it's bittersweet because I know that when I first moved out here to start my journey as a respiratory student you know it was bittersweet because it was a good thing that I was coming out here to fulfill you know a career change that I've been longing to do for so many years trying to you know better myself career-wise as a person and just overall just everything the reason why i'm saying that this is this whole process is is becoming bittersweet is because it's like i came all the way down here to fulfill a goal that i've been longing for for so many years and then it's like i feel it was just yesterday that i moved into my very first apartment started my program and didn't even think that you know of course i knew it was going to be hard of course i knew that it was going to be challenges along the way whether it be personal anything outside of my studies i just knew it was going to be challenges that was going to come within the process of me trying to complete this program and it was just going to test my strength along the pro the way of finishing all the way until graduation and it seems like I just started in August and now it's almost about to be August again, making it a full year that I have been in this program, in my apartment, and just on my own growing as a person and just overall making me stronger minded when it comes to certain things since I've been out here on my own and soon i'm going to be graduating because they just released out our first um the official date for our graduation which is going to be december 1st so i'm beyond excited about that because it doesn't hit you how real is getting and how close you're getting to your goal until you get those official dates you get your grades you get just everything that comes with hard work like just thinking about where i started in the beginning of the program i worked in the hospital for three and a half years before i even came down here to start this program so in a sense i had some medical experience as far as medications um medical supplies how to use them how to do bedside care and the types of care that's given on both night shift and day shift I, I i had that experience so it's like i did have some type of medical experience to utilize in the program where a lot of the stuff that we talked about in our lectures in the clinical setting wasn't new to me to a degree some stuff i already knew what it was but i just didn't know how to utilize that in patient care but saying where i just to look at where i started from and now me being a third semester um respiratory student i know a whole lot more than i knew when i first started and even compared to what i already knew 
already working in the medical field and then also working as a respiratory intern was just an added plus to the stuff that I was already learning then I already knew the people on my job and I met a few new people that I didn't know but may have seen around the hospital before I transferred so it was like it's a lot of pluses that came with how long I've been on my job um, the knowledge that I'm gaining being in this program and then on top of me being with you know a group of people in a facility that's willing to teach show you things and just pretty much utilize everything that they've learned back in their school days and some of the stuff that they show you that's an easier way to do certain things so it's just all an added plus and it's more pluses than minuses when it comes. Now with the minuses, when you are starting as a respiratory intern, it's very scary because I'm the type of person where I'm hands on, but it's scary when you know what to do on paper, you know how to how to utilize what you've learned, what you've studied on your tests, your exams, everything that your teacher will ask you, just on anything. But it's like when you're in a critical setting and someone comes to you and asks you like, what do you think, this and that, this and that, you have to be very fast and very critical in the setting that you're working in. So if you're the type of person that wants to be a therapist that just give breathing treatments, situations that may be for you. But if you want to be in the critical setting, trauma, all of that stuff like that, you have to be able to think quick on your feet. And someone that doesn't have any type of hospital experience, it will be very scary for you. Even if you do have hospital experience, the thing that really made me more nervous is that I now have more communication with the physicians like when you're a patient care tech mct or whatever you know the position is called at your facility you will have some interactions with the doctors if they but as an intern i have had direct communication with physicians when it comes to discontinuing patients treatments adding some type of therapy to their treatments if the patient is becoming critically ill, you write these doctors, you have to make sure you know what you're talking about. Because if you write them and you're just writing a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, you're gonna think that you don't know what you're doing. They're gonna look at all of that. It's too much gonna question your ability to care for this patient. When you write a doctor, message them about anything, you have to get straight to the point, you have to let them know what changes you wanna make and they have to okay it. And sometimes it might be something you may wanna do that is very useful for the patient, but the doctor may not wanna do that based on what they feel. And a lot of times as a student, you do have restrictions. Like you can question a doctor's, you know, you can question a doctor, but just make sure when you do that, you're very confident with what you know and you have to stand by it. If, a, if you quest, plan on questioning a doctor and you don't really know if what you're saying is correct, you're stumbling, stuttering, all of that stuff like that, the doctor is going to tear you apart and depending on what type of physician you're contacting, some may be nice and some may be not so nice, but either way, you have to be prepared. You have to know what you're talking about. You have to know what type of um, therapist you're going to be when you're out here on the floor actually utilizing what you've learned in school, what you've learned in clinics, and 99.9% .9 of the time, what you've learned in school, you're not going to use in the actual real world of being an RT. So a lot of times it's good to still know that stuff, but most of the time you're not going to use half the stuff that you're going to use in the real world that you've used in school to pass your boards and all this to stuff be like very, that. very mindful of how you're gonna do things. And a lot of times, if you know what you're talking about and you explain that to your patient and you get them to where they understand not using too many medical words that they don't know, you have to be very, very, you, you have to be very assuring that you know what you're talking about. You don't want to freak out the patient. You just don't want to alarm the patient if it's something that isn't related to the patient's situation. And then you have a whole bunch of other stuff that's coming with that. The patient's freaking out. They're on the phone with the family. The family's calling the nurse. The nurse contacting the doctor. Now the doctor's contacting, you know, certain family members. And now 
all of it's going to come to you and you're going to be the one to get yelled at and then people are going to be looking at you like you don't know what you're doing so anybody that is wanting to either be in the respiratory care program or is currently in the respiratory care program and you're planning to be a respiratory intern at your facility and you're not just cleaning equipment you're actually on the floor taking care of patients doing your thing just be very mindful that yes this is very exciting it's very is is it's just very exciting and your adrenaline's rushing you're just ready because you feel like you're moving to the next level of something that just compared to where you started off yet off at don't be so quick to jump the gun with certain things understand that you have to be quick on your feet you have to ask the questions with your facility what type of stuff you're going to be doing what type of um how am i going to be utilized in my position because i feel like if you're just cleaning equipment it could be an issue where they may not be able to have you on the floor because they don't have the insurance to cover that but the thing is if you want to be an intern make sure you ask the necessary questions at your facility that either you're currently working at or you want to work at and ask them what type of things are you going to be doing are you actually going to be on the floor are you actually going to be given breathing treatments are you going to be able to place orders are you going to be able to discontinue orders are you going to be able to message doctors communicate with residents or even be able to communicate with the nurse if you're thinking about doing that just make sure you answer the necessary questions that you um want to know as far as how you're going to be utilized at that facility as a student because i feel like just in my opinion and you know if you think otherwise you know everyone's entitled to their opinions i'm just pretty much voicing minds but i feel like if you're just cleaning equipment or just there to shadow a therapist without being able to do anything i feel like it's not going to help you in the program as you move forward in your semesters because being able to knock the dust off of you to get that nervousness off of you and being able to put your hands on certain things being able to go in direct um contact with patients on your own it's different having patients with a therapist and clinicals than it is having your own patients on the floor like you have your own sheets you have your own notes that you take from getting report from the therapist before you like you have total control over that but you also have a therapist that's over you so if you need help you can always communicate with that therapist or any therapist that's working that day but at the same time you have to make sure you take what you've learned in clinicals and in class seriously because you have to also take in consideration that these facilities are short staffed so with them being short staffed you have to think that one therapist could have three floors one therapist could have four floors or one therapist could have the er and another floor so you have to think about the dynamics of how you're going to move when you're on the floor as a student therapist taking on patients and sometimes you may have three floors yourself as a student because just because you're a student it doesn't take away how many what type of load they're going to give you they're going to give you a load just as if you were a therapist because i only had orientation for two days the first day i walked around with another student she showed me as far as what i would be doing how i would chart in the system what I can do, all the access that we have and everything like that. So that was my first day. And then my second day, I pretty much was asking her if I can go on my own to see if I can handle it because you can ask for an extra day, but they told us like, when you're a student, we only give you two days of orientation. And then we put you out there on your own because they don't want you to get co-dependent on having someone with you all throughout your shift you have to be able to maneuver on whatever type of floors they give you it might be two floors but they're not going to just give you one floor i've had i think um i think the most floors i've had is three and each floor has about 36 beds so i've had three floors and um mostly i want to say majority of my patients had prn treatments but majority of them also had 
Q6, Q4, and um, some had BID orders and some had, you know, Q8 hour um, treatments. But some people had CPT, some have PRN orders that they might ask for 30 minutes after I've given a treatment. And you may have to go from one floor to another floor to communicate with the nurse and then let the patient know like hey this is why you can't have this treatment 30 minutes right after i gave you a treatment because of the type of medication it is what type of um reactions you could have with that medication taking the same thing on top and then you have to also be very very um observant because i have had um i'm gonna use this example um i had a patient he was a guy um he has asthma but he also has copd and we did learn in class that a lot of copd people can have asthma and um some of them may have symptoms of asthma but they don't have asthma and i have seen that before but um this guy has copd he's had it for a long time and he had asthma so with his breathing treatments i think his breathing treatments were like q4 and his wife brought some medications that he had at home and he had this rescue inhaler that she brought and also some breathing treatments, some NAB treatments that he also takes at home too. So when I was coming in to give him a scheduled treatment that he was due for, he had just taken his rescue inhaler. He told me earlier that morning that he did have some home meds that his wife was bringing up there, but he did not tell me that he was going to take them when she brought it. So um, um, me sitting there talking to him, I saw it on the table and I went over to see what type of inhaler it was because earlier that morning, I want to say he told me it was a totally different medication. And sometimes that's another thing too. You have a lot of short acting um, medications that people have and they think that they can take those same medications on top of each other because they have different names. So a lot of times, even as a student, you may have to educate your patient, letting them know why they can't take this on top of this because they're in the same class. And a lot of times you will get that because people will have family members bring home meds to the hospital when they know they're taking scheduled medications and they will take the meds, not, take, not tell you, and then now you got a patient in AFib or you got a patient that's, you know, getting just too overwhelmed, anxiety just building up because their heart rate is just going a million miles per hour. So that's a big thing to look out for. But back to my story, um, he took his emergency inhaler and then he had a dual nap. So he was saying that he wanted his breathing treatment, but he had just taken his albuterol rescue inhaler. So I had to explain to him that with the dual nap, we all know that dual nap has both albuterol and atrovent in it. And the simple way that we learned with the dual nap is that it has a front door and a back door. So basically with the back door, it kind of subsides the side effects that albuterol would normally do to a patient. Because even as a student, because a lot of times people will have their spouses or family members bring home meds and they will not tell the nurse or the therapist. And a lot of times you come in there and just give them their treatment just because it's scheduled. You have to, it doesn't hurt to take at least two or three minutes to look around the room sometimes check the drawers and stuff like that because at the same time you might have a patient that suffers from um dementia or sundowners and just be confused because of their current situation so a lot of times they may not remember that they have home meds there that they've already taken so sometimes it's good to take two or three minutes before the treatment gets started just look around and be observant and then if you feel like you need to ask questions sometimes you can check with the nurse too just to make sure there's nothing that was already given and that you don't need to give on top of what's already been given to cause any more additional problems than what they already got going on so that's just an example of being very cautious being very observant and just being very on top of your game as a student because even though you do have a job as a student therapist you want to make a good impression of whether they want to keep you as an actual rrt because even though you're already working employed with the facility you got a whole badge and everything they still can say they don't want you working on the floor because of x y and z you know so just be you know 
careful when you're working as a student or wanting to take on an actual intern position when you've already checked with the facility knowing you're going to be actually on the floor having continuous patient contact physician contact rn contact just being very fully 100 percent involved with everything that you've learned in school because that's another thing they won't give you something if you haven't been checked off for it but if you're comfortable with doing this and that and you get patients that you haven't even learned yet it doesn't hurt to learn about that when you go to school or when you're on break or just whatever the case may be just to learn about it so when you do get to actually work on the machine set a patient up on it you'll be more comfortable with it and then that way you could ask your backup therapist if you can do it with their you know standby assistance and then just get more comfortable with it and um that's just what i have as far as my take on the whole um internship or any type of externship that you may accept at a facility that you're thinking about if you're currently in the program or um about to start the program so um that is my rant on that Okay, I decided to end the vlog with this. Um, I just wanted to show you guys what I decided to have for dinner. I was in the mood for spinach dip. So right now I'm just seasoning my spinach with garlic, onion, and chili powder. I'm also going to put grapeseed oil on here as well so it can help with the seasoning penetrate into the spinach a whole lot better. So as you can see, I'm just going to continue to toss this in the pan and then I will show you guys how it looks afterwards and also um, just for those that may have just started watching my channel I am vegan so everything that I'm using in this dip is either plant-based or just vegan Okay, so everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it to my mini crock pot so I can go ahead and start on my cheese sauce and it's already set to high. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to transfer all the spinach over here. Okay, my camera cut, but this is the um, look, the final look of the spinach cook down after I transferred it from the pot to the crock pot. Um, I'm gonna let that cook a little bit more in there. Um, these are the cheeses that I decided to get to try in my spinach dip this time. Um, I'm trying to do something a little different. So I got the original cream cheese, which I've always used. But this cream cheese cheddar, um, cream cheese, this is something different. But I've always gotten the cheddar shreds, but I've never tried the cream cheese. So I did also purchase the Follow Your Heart Parmesan shreds. So that's going to be something also new that I'm trying in here. So I'm going to go ahead and cook this in a separate pot, simmer it down, and then I'm going to add it to my spinach. And as you can see, this is the final um, product. Um, everything cooked down really well. I let it sit for probably about an extra 10, 15 minutes. And I've already tried it and it turned out really delicious. So um, I'm definitely gonna have fun chowing down on this. I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here. Um, I do have a Q&A coming, so I am gonna upload that later on in the week. So I hope you guys keep watching my channel and you guys can feel free to ask me any more additional questions. See you later.